Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so just wanted to uh, share with people my thoughts from a high level of uh, using Python, specifically Cython, uh, to basically speed up a Python script almost to a factor of times 100. Uh, there's reports of uh, other videos I posted of them saying that they can get up to a thousand times speed up. But regardless, uh, you're probably wondering how they go about it. Now again, I'm not a Python expert, but watching uh, a specific video, uh, this one here shows you just the basic high level of the performance benefits you get using uh, Siphon. So uh, you might want to watch it, but the very last coding segment is the interesting one. Due to the fact of using C at a very low level, as, uh, as the more low level guys and, and gals, if there are any out there, I'll uh, call it whacking in the weeds. Um, basically what you're doing is you are uh, basically doing all your malloc and popping right off the stack because you're one step above assembler and the O operating system. Uh, which makes a very, very, very low level. You can do the same thing in C++ as well, but uh, I think people like C just due to the fact it's a lot simpler. There's no uh, real benefit in using things like object-oriented programming and all that at this point. But regardless, just watch this video to, uh, to really see the benefits and the coding style to really, really speed up a very simple algorithm and just to see it. Uh, get sped up by a factor of I think it was 136 times, and it was just pure coding style in C. Uh, call it Cthon like or Pythonize or whatever they call it in in, in a Python uh, script. Now the question comes back to okay, so you can do that within Python. That's awesome, but when you could use uh, I was reading on Quantstart where you can use Python as a one-stop shop for your entire trading. Um, that may be true, but you're still limited in a lot of ways in terms of your execution. Um, and it, it is an option, obviously, something that's worth exploring and using a, a, or a, pack, a package, a Python package called, I think it's called IBPY. If you're gonna use uh, Interactive Brokers, uh, it's basically a wrapper in Python uh, above the Interactive Brokers API. So that's an option, but I, I'm not very comfortable in going that direction. So my next step was to check out this video where you want to basically have a, let's say, C++ program or a C, uh, C program that somehow enables you to call Python scripts. So this, this video is very interesting. So what this guy is doing, it's a full hour presentation of uh, embedding uh, the Python interpreter right in your C programs. And basically he just shows all the entry points into the Python interpret because obviously Python being open source you can obviously download the source code for Python itself which is basically as he says a big C program but there's some dangerous paths with it uh, I further explain that in this posting here about how uh, that's that is a smart way of doing it but you still have a lot of bloated code because you're embedding the entire interpreter of Python so you're really complicating uh, your C program. So that comes back to the question of why do it anyways? What's the point of having Python? If you're going to use C or C++ as your calling program, I call it that, or your calling language for things like position management, uh, maybe database, and uh, specifically trading uh, execution or order management type of systems. So what's the point of having Python? Because what you're doing is you're trying to build a C-like uh, type of operation function to get the benefits of C in Python. But here, you're kind of like going about it in a weird way because you're using C, wanting to use the benefits of Python uh, and still have the convenience of C. Uh, so it's kind of backwards. I, I'm not, again, I'm not comfortable with that myself. Um, but uh, it, it's quite interesting uh, to see it in action. Obviously, all this is done in Linux because they're, they're needing to do away with uh, a lot of the things that Windows would bring, like all the calls and processing, extra un unnecessary processing. So they're trying to do away with that as much as possible by using the server edition of some Linux uh, flavor like Ubuntu or something, I don't know. But another thing to keep in mind, but, 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 um, yeah, I've posted uh, all my thoughts on that thus far. Again, this is all high level, just exploration, discovery, 
blah, blah, blah. Um, but as I said in this, going down this path is not for the faint of heart um, because you are uh, going low level and you're doing things like um, malleking and popping right off the uh, stack. So um, it's not really meant for uh, newbies and stuff, but if you really want absolute fast code and performance and efficient code with, with algorithms and handling some kind of market data, this is definitely a, a path to go. But that brings me back to um, things like uh, Simulink and uh, you know obviously MATLAB and, and again one of the advantages that I've mentioned in another video recently that I put out of why I think MATLAB's still the king compared to all the other um, options out there like R and Python. Now you notice I'm not talking about R anymore, this is just really Python C and bringing it back to uh, MATLAB and specifically in in Simulink, which is very powerful, Simulink itself. Now, the reason why I may, I'm not, I'm not going to say I will, but I may look at, uh, uh, and I'm still highly uh, interested in, in Simulink, is because just from an authoring point of view of just algorithms, because you get all the basic uh, elements with a full feature set of uh, functions, um, the ability to, uh, you know, visually build a model, and again, a systematic model, that can include your uh, flow, uh, state state flow of your data and all your conditions, building it around like a like a basic flow chart using state flow among other things, and also using these concepts of blocks, where you do it visually, and then from there generate your C, C++, or um, your, if you dare say, HDL for FPGA deployment. Now. The funny thing is here, uh, there are uh, abilities that a Simulink is built around C, and they say somewhat C++ as well. But again, uh, I, I'm always going to try to stick with C. It's much simpler than C++ again. It's less bloatware when you're trying to, don't ask me why people would be caught up in object-oriented programming uh, for the basic needs of just having uh, uh, basic uh, algorithms. And, and equations and stuff. Do you really need to go that level with object-oriented programming and all this other funny stuff? But anyways, that's just another topic. It's just what I'm thinking right now. Anyway, so one of the other advantages with uh, Simulink, you get these uh, S-Function Builder, which uh, enables you to uh, have your C code right within your Simulink uh, model visually. Um, and uh, also there's a, a, an option that you can use and put it on your Simulink uh, data bus, um, which uh, is like a logic board basically, um, and then be able to have custom C code on the startup of uh, your your Simulink uh, model, and also on your uh, so you can do it on a pre and a post uh, when the Simulink model completes. There's a lot of a lot of cool ways you can hook in C into Simulink. Now again, this is uh, one option is through the C uh, sorry S function builder. Um, so that's been designed in mind. And here's a really good um, option here uh, from this. This is an excellent blog for y using a Simulink with Visual Studio and stuff. Just, just again, I'm just putting it out there and showing that. And again, you can also do it with a MATLAB function as well. So let's say if you're generating it out of MATLAB itself or MuPad or whatever. Um, and then here is some other options that you can use for deploying uh, C or C++ within Simulink. Um, so this can all be done. It's still early days, obviously. Um, but uh, I, I'm very curious on this. Uh, and uh, again, uh, building that model, building a some form of a uh, bin, uh, sorry, an SO object, an object file, I guess you could call it, within, let's say, Linux, still make it uh, where you can expose it to other C or C++ components within, let's say, Linux, so that enables you to build a, a bridge or an adapter for whatever uh, broker you go with, or even, let's say, if you decide to go with QuickFix or Fixate, or maybe a custom uh, API for even a, a, an HFT broker um, as well that I've seen that's pretty standard. So there's a lot of options. It opens up a lot of options. Again, it's all complicated coding, but if you're absolutely needing uh, low level, absolute, I won't say ultra lowest latency, but it, it, it all comes down to how you code it up. And again, um, this video will show the difference on that coding style. 
uh, you 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 can increase the the performance in multiples of as I said a hundred and if it's done right uh, at a very low level uh, you can supposedly uh, increase it by a factor of, of a thousand plus so just putting all these ideas into people's heads if you are an advanced C developer or C++ developer um, this is something interesting I'm right now going to put on the back burner but it's something uh, spawned from looking at this Cython um, but uh, again, uh, as I said earlier, um, what's the point of having Python? The only reason I can see Python, if you're going down this path, is just for the convenience of having Python to bang out fast algorithms uh, development um, and just be able to prototype it in whatever environment and then be able to somehow uh, rip it apart and then be able to recode it in Cython. But again, uh, that that's, that's all cool if you want to keep it in the open source world and and do it at, at, at a free uh, basically for free um, but the other option that a lot of people don't talk about is this Simulink and uh, this this is really powerful I've already played around with it a lot just check out my Simulink uh, uh, search Simulink on my blog or the YouTube channel see some other big benefits that this can bring again uh, these are just ideas that I'm, I'm working with but at the end of the day there is no doubt no doubt that you need to uh, use C or C++ uh, right at the lowest level to really have the most efficient and highest performing code when it comes to uh, algorithms in trading or specifically quant as well as handling the data and your execution. Really important and as I call them, powers to be, um, have uh, looked said, you know, look, the, in the Linux and, and all the C and that's all good for efficiency but uh, for the sexiness with all the charting and all the fancy schmancy uh, interfacing, that's all done in C Sharp and uh, WPF. And then you can easily hook into that via some kind of messaging capability using something like uh, Zero MQ or whatever. But again, you have to build all the stupid fault tolerance that comes with it. But just just from an algorithmic point of view, this, this is definitely an interesting path that I'm going to further explore once I get through this never-ending uh, Khan Academy exploration, specifically, I'm in the last section of linear algebra, but it's just so daunting. Some of these videos are over half an hour, and it's a long, drawn-out process. But, oh, uh, one other thing I need to mention is a memory database. Again, uh, C is really good for that, and uh, when you watch these videos here, uh, seeing the coding style and the memory handling, you'll see how and why you can use uh, C uh, to really speed up your data processing and internal memory handling for large data and at the same time apply uh, algorithms and uh, do uh, calculations on the fly in parallel and blah 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 but very interesting um, but let me get through this Khan Academy um, Khan Academy before um, I uh, get into uh, further C, C++ low level stuff and maybe simulate, I don't know, but there's so many options out there. But I just thought I'd put that out as food for thought, talk to you later.